chapter number seven. That language is marketing strategy, or we call it uh, STP. But now, let's say marketing strategy. Now, a lot of people may ask you if you know the marketing strategy of a specific company, and you may not be able to find the answer. Because the answer to a company's money strategy is not a simple answer, because strategies, because marketing strategies does not have name. Um, it's not like they have the name of strategy A and B and C. But in order to explain the company's marketing strategy, you have to answer all three main components of that strategy, and that is called S, T, and P. So we'll look at each of them in more detail. All right. Uh, number one, X is Segmentation. Not segmentation. Keep in mind that now, a company usually has a product, and this product is designed by um, is designed after finding about a customer's unmet need, and then the 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 product is intended to satisfy this need. Um, but then, the question is. Who have this unmet need? It's not like everybody in the world, or everybody in the market, has the similar unmet need that this product can satisfy. A product can only satisfy maybe a small group of the customers in the market, and that small group we call it the target market. And for the target market, how do we find it? How do we find a small group of the market that is best, the most suitable for using our product? The one who will be most attracted to our campaign. How do we find that group? We find it firstly. We'll do it through segmentation. Segmentation is the act of dividing. No, the act of dividing the market into different segments. The market into different segments or different parts. No. Uh, again, market by definition consists of actual and potential buyer. So a market will be very big. A lot of people belongs to our market. So what we should do is we should divide them into smaller groups. But how? How should we divide them? What kind of segmentation basis that we could use to find the customers? Now, the most uh, popular ways, and you have probably heard of this. Is uh, dividing the customers based on demographic segmentation. Demographic uh, segmentation. Demographic or demography is the study of human population. It looks at uh, things such as age, gender, race, occupation or a family or family size, uh, etc. And here, um, we can divide, if we have the customers, here is our market. And we say, okay, I want to divide this market into smaller groups by using segmentation or uh, demographic segmentation base. Uh, let's see, I want to use age. I want to divide them between two age segments. One is from 0 to 15, one is from 51 to die, to death. I don't know, 80? Um, and okay, so when I say, okay, I would like to target this older group, okay, say if I am a, a nursing home, that is allowed. All right, I want, I want to target this group. And when I target this group, I think, oh, there's still a lot of them here. This is a very big market, I want to further segment them down. And so I can segment this further by using say gender. I want, I only want to segment the women. Okay, the women who are 51 years old and older. And also I want to target the family size. Because you know, people, older people who go to nursing home, they may not have a lot of kids. Their kid, they maybe they don't even have kids, so they don't want to take care of them. So I only want to look at women, 51 year old and older, who had say less than one kid, more equal or less than one kid, or one child. All right. So this very small, particularly small group of, of customers, maybe our target.
target market. All right. So you understand the act of segmentation is by using this you know, criteria, this basis, to divide the market into smaller parts. Okay? And of course, looking at this, I use three I use three bases to segment this market. First I use age and then I use gender and then I use family size. And you and, and this is uh, very common for a marketer to use multiple bases. Do not just use one base because if you're using just age, for example, or just gender, it will lend you a very big market. And it's not meaningful at all because you want to find the small and specific segment that is best attracted to your, to your product or service, then you have to do to segment with multiple bases. All right? Okay. Now, Besides uh, demographic segmentation, we can have other types of uh, bases such as geographical. Geographical segmentation. Now, geographical is very easy, very straightforward. Um, you divide people by the area that they are at, by area. Divide by area. For example, I divide people by, say, country, even the national, uh, international uh, business country, by city, the kind of city that they stay at. Um, even in the city, you can divide them by district, or even by, oh, I don't know, uh, by smaller in the district, all right? So, or passenger, all right? So in here, I divide them into um, the area where they work or the area where they live in, okay? That's very straightforward, your graphic. And you can and you can definitely combine these two. Say you can divide the customers by their age, their gender, and by the district that they live in. Here, you only want to target people who live in Hanoi and live in the four central district, who are 20 to 50 years old and are female. So I just use a combination of these two, and that works well too. Alright. Now, other geographic is getting more uh, obscure here. A demographical, geographical, and then psychographical. All right, psychographical segmentation is dividing customers by people who have similar psychographic traits. Or psychographic, uh, oh, sorry. Not psychographic, psychology. Psychological traits or characteristics. Um, so, psychographics can be people who are of the same uh, social class uh, or people who have similar lifestyle. You find people like lifestyle. And or people who have similar personality traits. Traits of a personality. Now in here, um, this I why do I say this? Why did I say this one is very obscure, very vague kind of, of uh, segmentation? Because it's, uh, it sounds good. Say when you do it, when you say, I want to target people who have like a healthy, a very healthy lifestyle, who eat green. Or, or eat or um, um, do exercise every day. Now it's it's uh, it seems to be very easy to um, to do it, but no. When you do use a lifestyle, it's very difficult to find these people. How do you know? Say for a class of fifty people, how do you know if anyone in the class follow a healthy lifestyle? You have to ask them. Right, you have to ask them. There's no other way to tell unless you ask them, are you either you're healthy or uh, how many how, how many do you do exercise frequently? How often do you do exercise? Things like that. And imagine, not just 50 people, in a market of millions of people, how can you ask each person that question? All right. So um, the best thing for us to do is to find a different way to find people with, you know, say healthy lifestyle, for example, Go to the lake, um, go to West Lake early in the morning, like 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. And you can ask those people, people who are running around the lake, you guess they are very healthy. 
or you go to like you, you go to a, a healthy style restaurant and you ask for the data of the customers who are frequent customers, frequent diners at the restaurant. And then you can guess that those people have a healthier lifestyle. Alright, so I said that this typographical uh, segmentation is nice to have, but it's rather difficult to gather, right? And so um, other kinds can include behavioral. Behavioral is also something you have to observe and something you have to ask them. So this behavioral um, segmentation usually divides the customers by their knowledge or the use of a product or the occasion that they use a product. Um, is a product. So examples of behavioral knowledge could be, uh, sorry, be examples of behavioral um, segmentation could be the occasion that they use. Occasion of use. Okay. Because you want to know that, you want to look at the customers who say wear a mask, a face mask, all the time, um, even when they are in a uh, indoor setting, or you want to look at the customers who only wear masks when they're traveling on the motorbike. You know, those are people who use, those people are customers using masks, but they use them for different occasions. And some company want to divide the customers based on the occasions, indoor and outdoor, all right? So, occasions of use, or they can say benefits, benefit source, okay. Uh, oh, sorry, salt. What kind of benefit they are seeking from the product? Now, one product can have different benefits. Some benefits might not even even be the intended benefits um, from the company, but the customers just find a way to use it. For example, um, say so look at the shower gun, the the one that we're using when we are. Uh, in the bathroom. Now, if you go to the US for, or European countries, they, you will not see such you know, small shower gun in the, in, in the bathroom. Not at all. They only have like a big shower hat so they can use to shower. They don't have the small one for us when we use a toilet. All right. So if, suppose that if, you have, if they have that you know, shower, have a shower gun, in European or the US, European countries or the US, they will not know how to use it. Or they would use it, you know, to, to take a shower. Right. So in here, the benefit of that, you know, um, shower head uh, is different from different people. So as a company who produces, you know, shower head or sh uh, shower guns, you should define the customers based on the benefit that they are seeking. Either for them, they use the product to wash themselves, or they use the product, you know, to when they use the toilet. All right. So that's you know benefit sort. Um, and also because Americans and Europeans they uh, do not use uh, water when they use a toilet. That's why they fight over toilet papers. Right? In Vietnam, we do not see such thing. Um, all right. User. Other examples of behavioral can be user status, meaning whether you are like a bronze member or like a silver or like gold, you know, whether you use it a lot or not, okay? Um, I think that's pretty good. All right, that's behavioral. Again, behavioral is difficult to, to get, but behavioral segmentation is difficult to do because you have to find a way to, to, to uh, approach these people with, with these characteristics, it's not easy to find those people who share the same, you know, say, occasions of usage for the product. So, um, now those are the four main segmentation bases that we can use. And over here, we have the criteria for segmentation. Now, okay, so when you define the market like this into smaller, smaller group, and you say, um, and so what is the requirement for this, all this act of dividing? Now, the, the, the segment 
that you define no, the segment must be satisfying several criteria such as it must be substantial substantial meaning it must be big enough to make a profit All right. if you and if you use too many bases and you end up with a super super small market of say 200 people and you're a big company then it's not worth it to do uh, to make a product and a marketing campaign just for 200 people and that so the, the, the 200 segment is not substantial and you should cross that out um, other criteria is differentiable differentiable keep in mind that this group must be different from each other all right you don't want to target like similar segments Sim it's like this it's like a, a banking right and you divide this banking into like eight portions why do you do this way because you want to make sure that everyone eat the same thing a little bit of the rice a little bit of the beans the mung bean and a little bit of the uh, meat here right and so we divide it this way but as a marketer we do not want this because we want our segment to be differentiable what's the point of dividing the market into similar parts like this you want to divide the market into different parts with different characteristics so that we can choose one or several segments that is the best for us to target right and so as a marketers what you would do uh, you would divide the chicken cake like this you know we divide here is all the sticky rice and here is all no not this one and here is all the beans and here is the meat all right we divide this chicken cake into all the three parts and they're very different from each other because you know you say that as a marketer you want to give people who like to stick your eyes only stick your eyes people who like meat only meat they don't have to eat other things all right so that is a marketer's you know way of thinking um okay now um the segment must be differentiable and also measurable measurable especially when you uh when you go with demographic and geographical segmentation it's quite easy for you to measure the number of people in the segment but when you follow a psychographical or behavioral it's more difficult to to be careful with this um, and then say actionable or uh, accessible no, 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 no. accessible that you are able to have a plan for them a working plan for this group and also when you have uh you are able to approach this group if say you target like a group of celebrities then you may have as a student a student who want to have like a startup business it may be very difficult for them to get access to a group of celebrities so celebrities might not be accessible segment for these new students who want to start up and you they, they should forget about that if they cannot get access to those group uh okay all right so those are criteria for segmentation and okay move on to number two call it number two targeting okay targeting is the t now targeting is to choose one one or several segments to be the target market it's a deal. target market is something that we keep talking about in, in marketing you cannot target the whole market you have to target a target market right um, so in my previous examples when we divide the market my segmentation is the act of dividing by using bases and now targeting, we choose. We choose which segment that we like the most. And then the segment will become our target market. And we also have something called targeting strategy here. We have three targeting strategy. Um, differentiated, undifferentiated, and 
focus. Okay, look at each of this. What does it mean? Now, once you choose this segment, or okay, so this example, I choose two segments. This one, I do this one and two to become my target market. Okay. Now, in this one and two, this two segments, what should I do with them? Now, if you follow a differentiated targeting strategy, it means that you offer different marketing mix to different segments. So for segment one, I offer them complete different marketing mix. Number one, and segment two, I give them the mix number two. Now, marketing mix includes products and prices. Suppose that you target like as you are Dove, Dove as their uh, shampoo brand, Dove target two, uh, two segments, the men and the women. And they give them not similar products, but different products. They give women, like uh, the women shampoo, and they give men a man shampoo that is in a darker color. Woman shampoo is white, and men shampoo is like navy color. All right, so that is different product, different marketing mix, different advertising strategies, different everything, different prices for these two segments. And we call it a differentiated targeting strategy. Now in the opposite, we have undifferentiated marketing strategy where you offer similar marketing mix to different segment. I don't care whether or not you are old or young, or here you are, you, although you are from different, two different groups and you have two different characteristics, I still offer you the same thing. Uh, it seems quite unrealistic, but a lot of companies, you know, some companies can do this. For example, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, like the Coke, their Coke is uh, given to people of all ages uh, from different cultures, uh, whether they are male or female, rich or poor, they use, they drink the same can of Coke. Now that's maybe similar marketing mix for different segments and that we call it undifferentiated marketing mix. All right, oh, I'm sorry, undifferentiated targeting strategy. And lastly, is the focused uh, targeting strategy. In the focused targeting strategy, we want to target a very small, but not too small, small enough to make a profit, a very small segment. And we call it a niche market. It's a neck, a niche market. A smaller market that no one is it's, uh, serving, no one is paying attention to, or the big companies choose to ignore that small market for example, if you want to provide, um, if you want to provide uh, transportation, daily transportation for the disabled in Hanoi. All right, the disabled in Hanoi they may stay at home or they may rely on their family members to take them to places. But uh, as a company who follow a focused targeting strategy, you may want to target these disabled people and if you, are, if you want to provide them with daily transport or transportation, then I, I think that you're, best, that you're following a focused strategy and, and that market is small enough for you. It's small enough uh, to be called a niche market. All right. So uh, many startup companies, many small startup companies, they choose a focused targeting strategy. They choose a niche market to serve first, and once they're successful, they may expand the market to different segments. All right? Okay. Uh, pretty good. Now, let's move on to the last part of our strategy, that is number three, positioning. Now, what is positioning? The, the positioning is to find a favorable image of your brand inside the mind of your customers. 
Okay. So now I have a market. I have a target market here. But what do I want this group to think of me? Or the brand perception. All right. Uh, uh, what brand perception I want to have here is um, it's called product positioning. Now, without a positioning, it's harder for you to do business or it's very hard for you to do business. Um, let's say Ariel. Ariel suffered from a loss um, in 2017 or 18. In 18, they lost. They, cannot make any, they could not make any profit at this time. Why? Now they're in Vietnam for several years, you know, in, uh, in 2018. Uh, but one of the reasons why is Aria did not have a very clear positioning. At this time, people always associate um, Aria with green. And green is the color green, color green, not like eco-friendly, but the color green and, and white. And this does not mean anything. It is not meaningful. You do not choose to buy detergent because they are, they have a green color. You right. Now, in the opposite, the other brands are doing very well in the Vietnamese market, include Omo. And one thing about Omo, we think about Omo Matic, right? It's, it's for the, the washing machine. Omo is for washing machine. And one thing about Omo, you think about, so big button, you think about dirt removal. So, um, or very strong, a very strong detergent. That is Omo. So they have very clear and working positioning. These three are the images, quite favorable images, of the brand of Omo inside the mind of the customers in Vietnam. Uh, or Thai in the past, there's no more Thai now in Hanoi in Vietnam, but Thai in the past have the positioning of whitening. It's whitening. It's also a very favorable image. But Ariel does not have any. So this is why they're not doing very well. So it's very important to find a positioning for your product and the positioning can come from your competitive advantage. Competitive advantage. Advantage. Now, competitive advantage, advantage is something that you do uh, better than competitors and also, this something is ideally is difficult to be copied by others. It's difficult to be copied by others. All right, and usually a company will find a competitive advantage based on a separate option, based on product, differentiation, differentiation, or say service, customer service differentiation, um, or by, um, no, I did not think of anything, price differentiation, or by distribution, etc. All right, and in here, uh, product differentiation means some, that your product must be very unique, like a very unique product. All right, that is different from other products in the market of the same category or even uh, uh, other products in other you know, industry, in other markets as well. So in this case, um, a business, when they, when they start a business or when they start making a new product, they should think about what is their strength, you know, what, what their strengths are and they should have a competitive advantage and they can use this advantage to become the firm's positioning. Because without the positioning, it's very difficult for you to carry to, to impress the customers. And the customers do not remember you, do not have any impression of you, they will not buy your product. Alright, so um looking at this, here it's everything that we study for this chapter. STP. Segmentation, targeting, and positioning. In this case, again, to answer a question, what is a company marketing strategy? Um, what, a ma what a company marketing strategy is, you have to answer how they segment the market, um, who is your target customers, 
and what targeting strategies they follow, and then what positions they, they, they want to have. You have to answer this money strategy in three parts, answering three questions. And that, um, this I believe is the most important chapter in marketing, uh, in principles of marketing. Because you know, any company without this STP, all the marketing activities will, will be astray, will lose their focus and will be you know, all over the place. Uh, it's it's at most important that you have a target market. You know who you are going to serve, and this target market must be able to satisfy all the criteria that we have been discussed, like being substantial, being measurable, etc. And then have a clear positioning. Có một quyển sách tên là The Purple Cow. You know the um, the purple cow talk about. How normal cows are black and white, but this cow is purple. And because it's purple, um, it has a lot of benefits. Let's keep it that way. So when you are different, when you're different, when you have a different and a strong positioning, your company is growing quite strong. If you do not have any clear positioning, if your product is just similar to many other product, other products in the market, high chance that you will fail. All right, so. Um, that is the end of this chapter. Thank you very much.